talk a little bit about what VQ mismatch means. V stands for ventilation. This is basically air going in and out of the lung. And Q stands for perfusion. This is basically blood circulating to that area of the lung. And it kind of goes along with what they say about the lungs and learning about the lungs. is basically air goes in and out and blood goes round and round. And ventilation and perfusion occur simultaneously in the lung. And how they occur and in what ratio can actually have a lot to do with uh, the different pathologies and specifically uh, hypoxemia. Let's give a little bit of background though on ventilation and perfusion. The first thing to remember when we talk about ventilation perfusion is remember the heart. Okay, here's my little diagram of the heart. And there's the right side of the heart and the left side of the heart. Here we have the tricuspid and mitral valves. You remember that the right ventricle pumps blood out to both the right and the left lungs through the pulmonary artery. And then of course the left side pumps blood out through the aorta. First of all, you know the left side, uh, when it pumps blood to the aorta, the pressures that we usually see there are anywhere from 80 to 120 millimeters of mercury. Not so on the right side. The right side is, very, is used to pumping very low pressures. In fact, the typical, what we call pulmonary artery systolic pressure ranges around 30 at most uh, in terms of norm normal. 20 to 30 is the general range. Why that is important is we have to realize the lungs are sitting here on both sides of the heart and this blood gets pumped to them because it's, it's done at such a low pressure, around 30 millimeters of mercury, gravity actually has a very large determinant about where this blood goes. And so what actually happens is that you have more perfusion to the lower areas of the lung than you do the higher areas of the lung. And areas in the upper part have lower perfusion. Now, there is also a very similar distribution of ventilation. There's more ventilation in the lower areas. But that, that differential in ventilation between the upper and the lower is much less variable than it is in perfusion. So there's a big difference. And as a result of all of this, what we see is uh, when we look at a ventilation to perfusion ratio, and what I mean by a ventilation to perfusion ratio is when we look at the alveolus and the capillary that goes along with it, we look at how much ventilation is occurring in the alveolus and how much perfusion is occurring in that unit. So in this unit here specifically, what is the perfusion to ventilation ratio? Now, why that becomes important, we'll get into. But suffice to say at this point is that areas in the top part of the lung generally have high VQ ratio. And, and the reason why that is the case is because there is more ventilation in the upper portions of the lung and there is less perfusion. Okay, so perfusion is lower in the upper portions of the lung. That makes the VQ ratio higher. Whereas in the lower portion of the lungs, the VQ ratios are generally lower. And why is that? Because there's more perfusion. So you could probably see that if you have a lot of ventilation, um, what's the extreme? If you had a lot of ventilation but no perfusion, that would be kind of like your trachea. Okay, Your trachea has got a lot of ventilation, but there is no perfusion to that area uh, in terms of uh, capillaries. And so we call that dead space. So that would be an extreme that would be an infinitely high VQ ratio. Whereas the alternative is with a low VQ where basically ventilation is zero. Well, we just talked about that type of a, of a mode or mechanism of hypoxemia, and then we call that shunt. Just to kind of give you an idea about what the extremes are. Okay, but we digress a little bit. Let's get back to what a VQ ratio is. So if we have an area of high VQ, again, here is our alveolus. And here's our capillary, pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein. What this means is that there's quite a lot of ventilation occurring, but there's not a lot of perfusion. This type of situation is going to cause, for generally speaking, a high oxygen situation. Now that is opposed to an area of low VQ. In an area of low VQ, we have, here's our alveolus again, 
we do have some ventilation, but the majority of this here, what we have is we've got a lot of perfusion. As a result of that, this ventilation is not able to saturate this area of perfusion, and so we typically have low oxygenation. Okay. Notice, however, ventilation is occurring in both these situations. There is no shunt going on anywhere, and there's no dead space. The situation that we talk about here in this case is something called VQ mismatch, and that's a situation where there are certain lung units that are high, VQ, and certain lung units that are low. That is what we call VQ mismatch, and that's what gets us into trouble in terms of hypoxemia. And now let me demonstrate what it is that happens in that situation. Okay, so I'm going to draw a diagram that we had when we talked about shunt, but it's not shunt. These are two options that the blood can go through, and these represent two different areas of the lung. The top part is going to represent an area where we have high VQ, and the lower area is going to represent where we have low VQ. Now, this is important. Areas of high VQ, by definition, are going to have low perfusion. That's why I've drawn this limb skinny, because there's not going to be a lot of blood going through this area. Okay. Whereas, by definition, areas with low VQ are going to have quite a bit of perfusion going through this area. Okay. So, let's again look at our numbers. Your typical saturation of oxygen in the venous blood is 70%. Now, what's going to happen as this blood splits? Notice it's not 50-50 like it was in shunt. There is definitely a smaller area of blood going to the areas of high VQ versus areas going to the low VQ. But anyhow, the areas of high VQ will go and they will be fairly well oxygenated. So let's say that after it goes through these alveolar units that the saturation here is 98%. And why is that? That's because we have little perfusion but very good ventilation so we're going to oxygenate these lung units very well. Let's go to the area of low VQ mismatch or sorry, the, of low VQ, I should say. The mismatch is the fact that these two are different. And uh, in that situation, the saturation is going to be, it'll still be better than 70%, but it won't be much better. Let's say it'll be 80% saturation. And why is that? It's because we have a lot of perfusion going to this areas of lung units, and we have low, low ventilation, and so we cannot oxygenate this very well. So now, when these two limbs come back together, the question is, what's the new saturation going to be? And the thing you've got to realize here is that there's many more red blood cells that are 80% saturated than there are red blood cells that are 98% saturated. And as a result, the arithmetic mean of these two is not sufficient to tell you the answer because it's always going to be weighted more toward the lower saturation area because that has the more perfusion. So that's always the way it is by definition, is that it's not going to be the mean of these two. And what would be the average of 98 and 80? Well, it would be around 89%. It's not going to be 89%. Okay? It's not going to be 89%. It's going to be closer to 80%. And so a more realistic number there would be 85%. Okay? And that's the mechanism that gives us hypoxemia. So let's think about this. Let's go ahead and give 100% oxygen. Okay, that 100% oxygen is going to go here, and that 100% oxygen, unlike shunt, is also going to go here. And so, in fact, what happens is the 100% oxygen is able to overcome this, this inequality in VQ mismatch, and as a result, the 85% will correct to 95% plus, depending on the amount of oxygen that you use. And so, as opposed to shunt, where 100% oxygen doesn't really make a difference with oxygenation, with VQ mismatch in this case, 100% oxygen does actually make a difference. Now, let me go ahead and show you an example of VQ mismatch. And for that, I'll show you the prototypical. Now, VQ mismatch is the most common. If they ever ask you that on a test, it is the most common cause of 
hypoxemia. And the reason for that is because of the causes are so common for this. For instance, pneumonia, pulmonary embolism. Um, what about a COPD? All of these are reasons for the patient to have EQ mismatch to the point where is, if they ever ask you this on a question and you don't know the answer to it and you see VQ mismatch, then I would select that one. Let's go ahead though and focus on one of these to sort of illustrate that. Let's focus on pulmonary embolism. Okay, so you've got your lungs. Let's go ahead and uh, show these schematically. And of course, you've got your pulmonary artery coming out and going to the different lungs and it splits off and splits off again. This is your heart here. So when you get a clot that forms, the clot goes, gets pumped in and it goes over to a specific area and lodges. What happens at that point is that there is no more perfusion to this segment of the lung. And as a result of that, if there is no perfusion, you're going to have an area of high VQ because there's very low perfusion. Now, the blood that would normally go to this area, what, what happens to it? It's got to go everywhere else. So perfusion increases there, it increases here, it increases here, it increases here, it increases everywhere. So in other words, everywhere else, you get a area of low VQ low VQ in comparison to this area here. As a result of this, the whole situation is, is that you get low oxygen in the blood. Okay, so let's summarize the situation with VQ mismatch. All right, number one, it responds to 100% O2. Remember, the only one that did not respond to 100% O2 was shunting. Number two, you have an increased AA gradient. Number three, the causes. So here they are. COPD. You can even get fibrosis causing this. Asthma. Pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary hypertension. And even pneumonia. And as a result of all of these causes, it is the most common form. OK, 